and it is, but it also has a lot of variance in it because you know you got to do the lava dive like you mentioned, and then when you do the green gate glitch, you only have five supers. And so I'm confident that both of these players can get the green gate glitch, you know, instantaneously. But at the same time, you know, you just never know if something weird happens, and you got to have a safety save or a reset. So uh, this this will be a lot of excitement to see how well these guys execute. And looks like we're off. All right, doing series, nothing new here. The only thing I'm going to add to that is I don't think with these two runners, you're going to see them grabbing many of the safety items, if any. They're both very aware of who the other runner is and how good they are, and neither one of them are afraid to make the big play and roll the dice. So I'm thinking they're going to be running straight forward as fast as they can. Yeah, absolutely. This is... Uh... There's no other way to say it. These are two of the best players in the tournament, and they're going to be giving it everything they got. So this should be a lot of fun to watch. Sloters, I believe, is seated number one in the tournament, if I'm not mistaken. He is. Sloters is seated number one. Fusta is seated number seven at the moment. Although I think, you know, everybody understands. Anybody that knows anything about Super Metroid speedrunning knows that Fusta is, uh, you know, one of the best players, not only in this tournament, but just in general. So uh, it's almost kind of like throw the seeds out and just watch the masters go to work you know i mean and look at how tight they are right here oh sloters you lose sync in that last room in series and that steam makes you pay for it yeah they were synced heading into that last room that i think they even got the same d boost there but fusta just unfortunately just barely missed that um first wall jump which definitely happens from time to time so now they'll make their way onto the planet and start the normal collection they'll do their, you know, go down to Morphing Ball, grab the Alpha Missiles, and head up to Bombs. Yeah, and I apologize. I I didn't pay attention to the names. I said Sloters. I should have said Andrew. Oh, it's okay. And I'm just going to apologize in advance. I'm going to be calling Andrew Fusta all night just because I'm conditioned for it. <laughs> yeah, I actually had to PM Sloters earlier and say, is Andrew Fusta? Yeah. Just to, just to make sure I knew who I was talking about. All right, all right. so here we are. I don't remember, I, I think most players, like I don't usually run Moonfall or Moonwalk, but I actually will in this category because it's not overly detrimental to some of the fights. But it uh, looks like Sloters will not be using it, and I don't remember if uh, Fusta turned it on or not. He did not either. So we got, uh, this warms my heart. We have an appropriate fall speed race tonight between two of the best players. Well, I'm going to say that's something I happen to agree with you on. Yep. Nice. I, I do agree with you on the whole Moonfall thing. We uh, we need to recruit as many people to our cause as possible. <laughs> All right. Slurs coming down. You're getting a pretty much optimum, that little hop over to the ledge and then straight over to the morph ball. It's amazing, you know, at glance for somebody that's never done it to look at this game you don't realize just how many little optimizations go into every room you go through oh absolutely yeah and uh one thing that i think makes players like sloters and fusta stand out is not only do they have excellent room strats and they execute really well but sometimes the the difference between a more experienced and a lesser experienced runner is also knowing like how to adjust quickly when you accidentally mess up what you're going for. And I've already seen um, both players like make very quick adjustments when they just barely miss something. So you'll note that neither one of them will probably have slow room times anywhere. No, I'm not looking for that. There, I'm not looking for anything about this match to be slow. Yeah, period. exactly. All right, Sloter's doing the right side climb. I believe Fusta will be doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I believe yep. they both do the classic climb. They do? Good, perfect for GT Classic. You know what, I'm Ancient, I'm gonna start using that. I'm gonna start calling the right side climb the classic climb. I like that. I Honestly, I've never tried anything else. I played around with that ledge grab for about 15 minutes one time and I said, uh-uh. That's just, I don't see how people do that. I am in awe of people like Static9 that can. 
Sloters with the 451 bombs time without Moonfall. Foos to grab in the 456. So only a few seconds behind here. And let's see if both players can get a one round BT. Two sub five bomb times. Yeah. Well, Sloters off to a good start getting the five shots off. I'll get the and finish. Oh no. Okay. Recovers pretty well. That that ammo spread can really mess you up. Ooh, yeah, and Sloter is unfortunately exiting with only two missiles. Uh, not a huge deal. He can farm back to full missiles um, when he goes to through the Terminator room, but uh, it definitely makes it a little bit slower and it's a little bit trickier. BT being unkind. And that's, it really comes into play here because he knows with Fuzda every second is going to count. That's right. And Fuzda does gain a little bit of time on him. They're basically a door transition apart. Indeed. And you'll note that um, the players opting to shoot missiles at the pirates to conserve some energy. Uh, one thing that makes this category a little bit different from the other ones is um, not only will they be skipping uh, charge missiles and charge beam, as Ancient pointed out earlier in uh, Big Pink, but when they get to Red Tower, they're going to have to head up to grab uh, power bombs. And so they end up having to go through Hellway twice and using the D-boost to get over to the, to the power bombs. So over the long haul, there's a lot of attrition on your health. And you actually have to be very careful because if you take too much damage along the way, you can actually end up getting in a situation where you have to go a lot slower. So um, maintaining good health and good ammo, really honestly from this point forward all the way through crate is very paramount to being able to move quickly. Absolutely, it's, it's really comparable to new route uh, health saving techniques because you're heading straight up to Fantoon with no suit. Same kind of principle. You know, so they're taking a second to get every little energy drop they can. Yep. And both of them are up to full. They're also going to want to try, they're, you know, I'm sure they would like to see some missiles too. So here we are, Sloters skipping straight in. That's a GT Classic Strat exclusive. And uh, yeah, we'll continue on here. I'm sure they would like to see some missiles. I assume that we'll see them farm... Um, one of the hoppers and the bug here at the bottom. Oh, looks like Sloters is going to run through him. Oh, it looks like Fuzda will too. Sometimes people will, will farm that first guy to try to get some regular missiles, but they also have the opportunity to farm uh, up in the hellway where there there will be plenty of bugs. Yeah, I'm thinking if they do any farm in hellways, probably. And I don't expect much in hellway, to be honest. Yeah, it's uh, it just kind of depends on what they get. Uh, it's usually not overly comfortable to be exiting Hellway with zero missiles. Um, ooh, unfortunately, Fuzda needed a second shot there to, to clear that out, but now he's up. Um, but yeah, Overfiend uh, VIP is the world record holder for this category and has mentioned before that you know you can kind of get yourself in a bind if you don't maintain some level of missiles uh, heading down to Crate. So hopefully we'll figure it out. But the good news is that the power bomb uh, in the uh, pirate room is a substitute for missiles. So if they don't have what they need by that point, they'll just use their power bomb to kill them. Slaughter's also only with one super. He's probably got that on his mind. Yeah, now we see the farm happening. Uh, he's doing a two round farm, getting some bugs and clearing out all those little uh, crab creatures. And Foos are doing the same thing here. So even though that takes a little bit of time, it actually saves in the long run. Foos does uh, missiles in a very healthy position with minimal farm there. He was able to make up a few seconds there on Sloters. Also though, uh, Sloters has full health. Foos only has 79, so he'll need to be a little careful with that. Yeah, I, ex yeah, I expected Sloters to get that CAC attack for the super. Yeah. 
Ooh, Fusta accidentally getting grabbed by the Yapping Maw. Ooh. Okay, he's okay. Although he will not be able to farm anything other than health until he gets over 50. And note that Sloters and Fusta both breaking the glass. Oh, well, it looks like Fusta's not going to. Usually in this category, it's best to break the glass the first time through. So you can just jump up there um, when on the return after Lower Norfair. But it's not uh, a super huge deal. He'll just lose a few seconds for that. All right, nice drop through the party zone for Sloters. Oh. And mini crates, not a problem. And there's that uh, power bomb by Fusta we were referencing earlier. And he's having to be very careful to dodge all the projectiles from mini crate because if he had taken even one hit right there, he would have gone back into the... Uh, health bomb location now, this health is bomb interesting. Range. I'm sorry this is interesting Sloters is going to have to do a modified quick kill here right and this is part of what I was talking about is the problem with not having enough missiles um, assuming Fusta gets this he will make up a lot of time a lot of time yeah Sloters would have been in a better position had he used the power bomb to kill the uh, well he had two options he could have used the power bombs to kill the pirates or he could have used uh, uh, a super missile to kill mini crate but uh luckily he's he's got it figured out here and we'll just be a few seconds behind fusta to the various suit no oh. and fusta looking really good on ammo energy a little sketchy yeah luckily for him though he'll only take a little bit of damage on the way out of here um before getting the high jump boots e-tank so he'll be in decent shape here in about three or four rooms And Fusta nailing the mock ball out of the crate exit. Well That's done. That's a sweet little mock ball, and it's a tight frame to do it in, too. Yeah, it always feels good when you get it. So I assume, you know, like, basically, if you were going to high jump bootless lava dive um, for this category, which is, like, really hard, and you would only really do it if you're going for a super top time, um, you would have needed to pick up the crate tank. So the fact that both runners skip that means that they're definitely going to go down to high jump boots. Uh, grab the E-Tank to refill, get high jump boots. And my assumption would be, especially since you see Fuzda has power bombs equipped, that he will be skipping um, the missile pack up top. He's going to fall down, fire off that power bomb to kill the little Sova, and then exit the room. There he goes. Well done. And he's right on through. Sloter's now grabbing his high jump boots. I think I'd be remiss if I didn't say something about how high jump boots is my favorite item in the game. Oh, best item there is, no question. Yeah, absolutely. I am with you on that one. Okay, the next sort of uh, choice that the runners get to make is they're gonna make it. They're gonna go through the cathedral here and go through. Uh, is it lava tide or lava rise? I don't remember all the names of the rooms. Rise and tide. Yeah. So uh, when he comes out of here to Bubble Mountain. He's going to lay a power bomb and start his descent to Lower Norfair. But this is where most players will stop by um, the bug room down here and farm all the way to usually full health and full supers to get ready for the green gate glitch. So and here we go. That's exactly what Foost is doing. So a little RNG here. Ooh, very nice. Man, he got a great farm right there. Yeah, he did. Sometimes those things can be very stingy and not give you the supers that you need very quickly. And Sloter's getting a really good farm too. Yeah, I'm glad to see that. All right, well, here we go with the lava dive. Obviously, neither player has done a safety save, so if there's an accidental mistake of any kind, that could be the game. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, and perfect. Who's the nail in that water ball in? That was pretty nice. And Fuzda's in. 
Sloter is entering with the uh, Morph Ball, another good method. Fuzda making the safety save. Sloters is in. I assume we will see Sloters do a safety save as well. Yeah, this is the one I would think, I don't care who you are, it would really be foolhardy to not safety save at this point. Indeed. So, because basically if you didn't safety save and you accidentally messed up your green gate glitching, then uh, it's pretty much GG. All right, here we go. So we'll wait on the two runners to get their green gate glitch and then we'll explain the code. Foo's the first try, nailing it. Let's see what we get from Sloters here. For anybody who's not aware, the this is where we're gonna see the the GT code being used. They're gonna hold all four of the face buttons as they enter this room. Fusta gets it no problem. Sloters is through with his green gate glitch, and he will be using the code here shortly as well. And at this point, this is my favorite part, Ancient Gamer. Uh, at this point, it's just a straight boss rush. The players are overpowered with all the items they need other than screw attack, which they'll grab here in a moment. And let's just uh, enjoy the show, shall we? Yeah, it's going to be nice because they're going to fly through them. You're going to see some microwave action. You know, all the stuff you usually only see with randos. This is, uh, oh. And Fuzda missing that short charge. It's not going to hurt him too bad, but. Nah, he'll only lose maybe a second. Um, luckily, he's already got Space Jump, and he has Screw Attack now, so he can just pop right on up there. Sloter's now going to grab his Screw Attack. I absolutely love that strat that Fuzda just ran. That's very well done. Now he's going to get some fast pillar action. Oof, beautiful. That was really nice and so precise. You know, you can tell that the thousands and Sloter's doing something. Yeah, like Sloter's nailing it too, man. Ooh, so nice, dude. Those guys are just good, man. It's Super Metroid is such a joy to watch when you get to watch, like, you know, really top players that have, like, really excellent movement and strats like it's just so much fun to watch them go to work and this is quite a display of skill right here and especially in a category like this where now they've got all the movement items like you said they're overpowered they know they can just go full out uh, it, it, it really is something to watch yeah one thing you notice that both players did in um I guess right before Wasteland is they killed as many of the uh, key hunters as they could. Oh, That's so an anti-lag strat, there. isn't it? It is, yeah. It's a RTA strat. Um, it will reduce lag and therefore make um, the room go a lot faster. Fusta had a little bit of trouble with the uh, Metal Pirates there. Yeah, Sloters had a little bit of trouble with the Kago, but he makes it through. Nice plower house by Fuzda now. One of my favorite strats in the game. And let's uh, let's watch a nice Ridley fight here. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure he's going to make short work of the Pelican. So this is just like old route. Uh, you've got a fully powered beam, so it takes 20 charge shots uh, to kill Ridley. Every charge shot with Plasma, Wave, and Ice does 900 damage. And Ridley and Mother Brain, too, in the future has 18,000 uh, damage. So make they will make very quick work of Ridley here. And I believe that was shot number 20 right there. Yep. Beautiful fight. And at this point, uh, there will not be another item collected. Uh, by either player unless they accidentally the only item that they're gonna actually like physically come across that they would potentially accidentally make a mistake and get is the moat missiles when heading to or heading back from wreck ship so you will not see them making any divergence from their path straight to the next boss so uh, at this point Fuzd is gonna head out of here and start making his way up to Meridia
Ooh. Oh, really nice clip damage boost there and the speed ball by Fusta. Ooh, that was beautiful. That's a uh, new route uh, special right there. A little spring ball hype. And uh, if Plasma wasn't strong enough for Lower Norfair in this category, you also get to exit with um, Screw Attack, which means that there's really nothing to fear at all. Uh, one of the worst rooms in this Lower Norfair exit in most other categories is like the Three Musketeers room, which Foos is heading to right now. You will see him not slow down a single bit because he will either clip through them with Plasma, uh, and if not, he will jump through them with Screw Attack and not have any trouble whatsoever. Which I have to say has got to be really satisfying if you run any percent. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> just to kill them quickly. Well, you know, when you're speed running this game and you, you know, if you're running old route, you know, for a long time, you kind of forget how overpowered screw attack is. And then when you run a category like this and you get to use it, it's just such of a such a comfortable item. Foos to taking advantage of some uh God, that was nasty. He just uh, killed as many uh, creatures as he could to reduce lag on the power bomb, and then he also got the down back without having to stop. Sloter is having a very nice lower Norfair exit as well. Doing the exact same thing, killing the three creatures in that room to reduce lag. Another excellent strat. Again, all that optimization, and they just pull it off. They make it look so easy, and it's not. No, not at all. Okay, one thing you will see, Sloters will make up a few seconds here. Uh, Fusta has to drop the bomb here to open the uh, the tube. I believe Sloters already opened it, and you will see him just straight jump through the room. It will be very, very quick. Um, so he'll make up maybe four or five seconds in that room. Unless I just forgot and missed that he opened the tube. Yeah, he jumped. You can already tell that he jumped through the door, so he's going to space jump up right there. Very nice. Fuzda, in the meantime, coming into uh, Aqueduct, getting ready to do some microwave snake. Oh, yeah, please. Uh, Ancient, will you explain to us? That's something that's unique about this category. Uh, what are we going to see with Batwoon and uh, Dragon here? Well, even though you can't see it on their item screen, uh, the players have X-ray scope. Uh, the game has no way of showing it to you unless they physically pick it up. X-ray has a very unique capability of resetting the iframes. And you see him buffering the X-ray there. Now, he didn't hold it quite enough. He took a second shot. But what happens is, since plasma penetrates, and at this point of the game, they're not supposed to have plasma yet and they have x-ray it allows them to continue doing multiple frames of damage on the enemy that's right all and right there's sloters with the one shot kill here uh, i'm gonna call it now full half the incoming oh, oh too bad a commentator uh cursed him i think all right sloters coming up for his and if he can get it he will make up some time again Yes, he will. Um, one interesting thing about this particular category, well, I'll explain in a second. Very there nice. There it is. One thing about this particular category is it will not make up as much time as most other categories because this is the only category where you would enter that room with space jump already. So the fact that uh, Fusta was able to space jump through after missing the full halfy saved a little bit of time. Fusta going. For that spike suit, Slaughter's doing the same thing. And the reason they're doing that is so that they can get that return happy. And there you go with Fusta doing the microwave on oh stereo microwave dragons. That's so nice. Ooh, unfortunately, Sloter's missing out on the uh, one-round kill there, but uh, getting one extra shot in. Both players having a little bit of a slow uh, Dragon. Not not bad, but uh, sometimes you can kind of get lucky and get quick shots on Dragon and kind of get out of there. Nice Wample jump by Fusa. Let's 
slater I agree is hot maniacal. on sales. Sorry. Oh, you're good. I, I agree, maniacal. It definitely is living up to the billing. So what you're going to see that's different about this category um, than what you might expect is Foost is now going to head back through Botwoon Room, and now he's going to head up to Wreck Ship to Kill, uh, the only boss left, Fantoon. This is the only category where you see this particular uh, boss order, where you have Crate first, Ridley, Dragon, and then Fantoon last. You know, I didn't even think of that. You're absolutely right. Yeah, Sloter's also nailing the Wample Jump earlier on his exit from uh, Dragon. Ooh, Sloter's with the absolutely beautiful uh, space jump up into the crack there. Threading the needle, that is not an easy thing to do. No. Now let's see, is Fuzi going Yep, he went for it. He likes to go for that frame-perfect spring ball jump out of the tunnel there. Unless something really strange happens, now I haven't looked, I guess I could look later, but um, I would be pretty surprised if by the end of this race, if these weren't the number one and number two fastest times in GT Classic so oh, far. Oh, absolutely. Now, you know, chat brought up another interesting point. This could actually come down to a Fantoon pattern here. It because could. Because Fantoon is the most random boss in the game. And the difference between what a... Fast and a slow. Oh, Sloter's going through that door. Wait, where is Sloter's going? No, uh, Sloter's. Oh, no. Sloters. I think I think Sloter's just went into any percent mode and doesn't realize that he hasn't killed Fantoon yet. And uh, this is, if he doesn't realize it before he gets down there, this is going to be really bad when the, uh, when the, the statue's break and then he just like the door on the left will open and nothing else will happen and Fantoon will still be yellow oh no Sloters man stop turn around it's too late mm, I wonder if he's gonna notice like a lot of times people will just sort of disconnect and not pay attention you know when they get into this room when it skips over Fantoon and goes right. straight to, yeah. to Dragon and the he, bad news is even if he sees it, he can't get out yet until the whole sequence is done. Yep, he just realized it. Alright, Fusta having a nice uh, fan team. Very nice microwave on fan team. Now, Fusta will now head directly to G4. That's right. Uh, in this particular category, oh, real quick, I need to shout out a cool strat. Uh, we'll see if Fusta remembers, but this is the only uh, category I can think of other than like a randomizer where you would have spring ball inside of wreck ship. So we have an opportunity for a spring ball jump uh, coming out of this little tunnel right here. Let's see if he remembers. Oh, unfortunately, he didn't shoot the uh, top part out, so he had to stand up. But uh, yeah, this is uh, a cool part because basically you just end direct ship, kill Fantine, and immediately exit. Don't have to worry about anything else in there. And Fuzda just showed us the most frustrating thing about this entire category, which is when you're exiting wreck ship, you have to uh, run alongside the conveyor belt that's making you go faster, and it's very easy to accidentally bonk against that door and lose your momentum. Yeah, that is frustrating. All right, Sloter's heading down to Fantoon now. I really hate that that happened. I do. I, yeah. I would have liked to have seen this go down right to the end because I believe it was going to. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was very, very close. Well, I, I, don't, I don't... Don't do it. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> I don't want to uh, curse anybody. I almost feel like I curse Sloters by saying these would be the two fastest GT Classic times. But um, one thing that we've already seen in this tournament, and you know, I've, I've mentioned it before, I think everybody needs to pay attention to this. Is that you know you can do stand up glitch in this uh, category, but it's more dangerous than in Hundo or any other category like RBO because you can see that the players have seven E tanks, but that last E tank will literally only go to zero. 
like it won't go to 99. And so if you allow that e-tank to get full, you know, and you're not paying attention during your stand-up glitch, then sometimes you can have the baby Metroid get locked in a position that you weren't expecting. And we've seen that happen, uh, I think, at least twice in this tournament so far. So just, you know, just be aware that that is something that is technically on the table uh, to happen. I obviously would never want to see it happen to anybody, but uh, it's a very dangerous thing. So when you run GT Classic, you have to be very careful about the stand-up glitch because it'll sneak up on you. Sloter is unfortunately bopping the door as well. That is, I'm telling you, that is actually really difficult and uh, very frustrating. Another thing you'll see is that uh, Fuzda, like, I know he's sort of kojacked some supers there, but he's also not super concerned about farming uh, because... Uh, he has a hundred missiles, so even if you like, you know, run out of supers, it'll be a little bit slower. But you can still, without question, um, not soft lock at Mother Brain. Really run. smooth Metroid Three room too. Oh yeah. yeah, that one's really difficult. He's in great shape. And now the next hurdle would be Baby Skip. <laughs> the swag missile shot at the uh, the ashes of the Terezo statue or whatever. And here we go. Oh! And Fuzda getting swallowed up by the baby. That's going to cost him a little bit. A little bit of time. But for anybody who might not be fully aware of the speed runs of this game, maybe have just seen them, you know, like online or something, but but haven't uh, run them too much. Uh, baby, baby skip definitely saves time, but it's not like super, super massive. It's probably in the ballpark of like 20 seconds or something like that. Looks like Fuzda is going to crystal flash would be my guess. Yeah, he must be going for a crystal flash strat. Or he's just going to refill with his reserves. Uh, Fusta? He doesn't have enough health to survive at the moment. No, nah, he's going to take it down in the acid you'll see him just use missiles here oh no and he just realized what he did yeah he can't do that because if he does it that way he doesn't have enough to crystal flash so this literally especially if Sloters gets baby skip probably just put Sloters in the lead that was really surprising because what I expected him to do there was to just use missiles to get rid of Mother Brain and then go into the acid to do the Crystal Flash. He would have been able to Ooh. do that. Sloters got grabbed, though, so it looks like we're... Uh, if Sloters hadn't got grabbed, I think Fusta would have still been maybe slightly ahead. Maybe not, though. I think it would have been pretty close. But, um, yeah, Fusta just accidentally making a mistake and kind of forgetting how much uh, health was in the reserves and then firing off those supers, unfortunately. Still a sizable lead, but uh, definitely closer than it was before. And Sloter's moving forward with 301. But now there's no uh, Zeb skip, because he had to kill the first Zeb to um, get back out. So he's just going to use missiles to get through here. And Sloters is going to be right behind him, dude. Very oh nice. Goodness. Very nice. Yeah, speed Zeb skip. I've not been able to master that one yet. Me neither, dude. It's, it's a tough one. <laughs> All right, and Sloters doing what I was talking about, using those missiles. 
Yeah, and Maniacal making a great point at this uh, juncture because Fusta no longer has anything in his reserves. He cannot do stand-up glitch anymore. So Sloters is going to make up some significant time. Looks like Sloters is crystal flashing. Which will fill up his reserves. That's true. This could come down to stand-up glitch, guys. And I would say that the amount of time that Sloters is going to make up is going to be very close to how far behind he is, if not more. All right, so Rainbow Beam hits Fusda at 35.29, roughly, a little, a little bit before. Rainbow Beam is going to be hitting Sloters at 37. Eight so, seconds. Yeah, stand-up's going to make up more than eight seconds. My goodness, I can't believe that this wow. is back to being this close. Wow. Just goes to show you this game, you never know. You never know. <laughs> I just you like to... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> You would not expect those two mistakes from these two runners. I this mean, is, honestly. Yeah, exactly. But this just goes to show you, like, their execution of the strats is superb, but nobody in this game, like, nobody is um, immune to, like, accidentally forgetting some, some piece of information. You know what I mean? Uh, but this is the greatest SRL race chat of all time. Earlier, Slaughter says, I am an idiot. And then Fusta later says, same. Same. <laughs> All right. And Sloter's still continuing that stand-up glitch, getting every shot in he can. Oh, man, this is really going to be close. Sloter's, yeah, it's going to be close, but I would give the edge to Sloter's at the moment. The stand-up makes a big difference. It does. It do And look, boy... And Mother Brain is gone for Sloters. Oh, wow, man. Yeah. This is insane. 3721, Spike Head on the floor. 3728 for Fuzda. Fuzda is about seven seconds behind. Um, not to try to curse anyone, but at this point, the escape is not overly, you know, technically demanding it's definitely one of the lesser demanding sections so it's going to be tough uh for fusta to catch up sloters would really have to make a mistake here and like he, that. going for the swag oh my god you've got to be kidding me dude oh and gets the oh my god people. dude what is this race what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> no, and Sloters falls. I have no words for what we are watching right here. No kidding here. Look at this. And, and Fusta falls in parlor. It is neck and neck. Oh Lady, my God. Ladies and gentlemen, I have something very important to tell you. According to SRL, both runners finish in first place with a time of 38.55. Are you kidding me? Both of them have the exact same official SRL time, 38.55, and the race bot has declared that they both have finished in first place. Ancient, I have never seen that before, ever. Ancient, all I gotta say, dude, is we have got to do more commentary together at some point. That because, is, it was awesome, man. That was awesome. Because whatever, whatever just happened needs to happen again. That so was what, the most exciting thing I've ever seen on an SRL race. No kidding. I mean, 
talk about living up to the hype. And now the question is, what what do we do now? I I don't know. What, what we need to do, I would assume, is just kind of stay on the line here and see what decision um, the organizers make. Apparently, Swiss does handle ties. The interesting thing about this is this could actually have not only an impact on these two runners, but an impact on a lot of other runners uh, moving forward in this in this tournament. Wow. So I just want to say officially GG to both runners. <laughs> Very exciting. Uh, both doing an excellent race uh, with all kinds of craziness. You, yeah, you can't you can't script something like this. I don't know if the chat could tell, but that was like 100% pure excitement and joy for me <laughs> during the end of that race. That was that was incredible. I'm that okay. was like that was so fun. That was got that was the best. This was has been the best race I've ever done commentary for ever. Oh man. <laughs> All right, Fiesel announces that it has officially been declared a tie. Congratulations to Fusa, congratulations to Sloters for uh, both finishing in first place. We will see how the Swiss tournament format sets this up moving forward. But uh, before we finish up here, I just want to quickly say, Fusta, Andrew W there, make sure to give him a follow. He's an absolutely excellent Super Metroid player and a really great uh, mod and representative of our um, uh, community. Sloters27, also an absolutely phenomenal dude, really cool, super helpful, uh, excellent runner. Both of these guys have super top times. Give them both a follow um, and follow Ancient Gamer. Ancient Gamer, thank you so much for doing commentary with me tonight, man. That was a pleasure. Oh, it was a pleasure. Everybody knows you're one of the best on commentary there is. And definitely give Kip a follow. And he is too classy of a guy to ever do this, but I'm going to do it. He does a thing called Strat Chat, and if you've never checked it out, you need to. Because you want to talk about somebody that really gives back to the community. Kip here takes a couple hours of a night out to help introduce newer runners, established runners, into some strats, into some techniques that they might not understand or they might not have tried yet. And it's really great. I happened to catch it the other night, Kip. I really enjoyed it. I think that's a great thing you're doing, and uh, I appreciate it. Well, thank you. I appreciate the kind words. And so uh, at this point, ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you to the organizers and everybody at Speed Gaming, Fiesel, and everybody who puts these things on. Um, my name is Kip. I had a blast. Thank you for having me on commentary. And Ancient, I will let you have the last word, man. All right, Kip. Have a good night. Well, guys, this is how you top off the night, I've got to say. That's it for the races tonight. And man, what could follow this? But I believe tomorrow morning at uh, 1130, is it? There's another one. My good friend, White Mage Becky's going to be doing the commentary. Be sure and check that out. It is 1247 a.m. Eastern Standard Time where I'm at. And I'm going to call it a night. Really enjoyed having y'all. Hope y'all enjoyed the race. Thanks for letting me do the commentary. We'll see you next time.